joining us for Bible study tonight. We're at a remote location, as you can see. We're glad that God has blessed us to come to Bible study one more time. Amen. The scriptures for tonight are as follows. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. That's Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> and the final one, will be John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. Again, that's Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
verses 1 through 5. And the final one is John chapter 10, verses 20 through, 22 through 30. Tonight we'll end our booklet, our study of sharing the gospel good news on the go. Tonight will be the end of it, if the Lord says the same, unless we get happy in the Lord <laughs> and we just keep running on because this has been a powerful study uh, showing us that every person that is not saved is a patient. Every person who is unsaved yeah. is a patient. And Jesus Christ is a great physician. And because Jesus Christ is a great physician, it is our responsibility to get the patient to the great physician, the doctor, Jesus the Christ. We've discovered that there are five P's to effective evangelism. Mm -hmm. There are how many P's? Five there are P's. five P's <laughs> to effective evangelism. And those five P's are? Prepare, pinpoint, personalize, picturize, prescribe. Lord Jesus. I Thank messed you, them Lord. up. <laughs> uh, prepare, pinpoint. <laughs> personalized, picturized, and prescribed. Okay. You got them right. It took you for six <laughs> months, but you got it right. Okay, so tonight we're closing out with prescribed. And here the soul winner is a pharmacist. The soul winner is a pharmacist. The soul winner is a pharmacist. And the pharmacist just makes sure that the patient has the right medication. The pharmacist make sure that the medication that is prescribed is the medication that is given. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we understand that every person, man, woman, boy, girl, are guilty of sin. Sin is our common ail ailment. Sin is that thing that keeps us grounded. Sin is that thing that separates us from God. Mm -hmm. And because of our sin, we can't get to God. God can't get to us. And our sin has been passed on from Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. So we all have sinned. We all have fallen short. We all have, have fallen short of the glory of God. And because we have fallen short, we need a Savior. Mm -hmm. That Savior is Jesus Christ. He is Jesus Christ. And because he is Jesus Christ, because we need him, then we can get to God through him. Yes. Jesus Upon his death on Calvary, he tore the veil of the temple. Before Jesus died on Calvary, mankind had to go uh, with a priest behind the veil. The priest, rather, went behind the veil and pleaded mankind's cause before God. Even the priest sometimes was wrong, messed up in sin. And as that priest was messed up in sin, he would drop dead in the presence of God they would pull him out and they would send another priest in. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is our great high priest. Yes, he is the one that died on Calvary. Amen. Jesus Christ, the one who died on Calvary, Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ, God's only one of a kind son, right. Jesus Christ, God's only unique son, died on Calvary for you and me. Yes, because we couldn't die for ourselves, because no other man could die for us. Therefore, tonight we focus on those scriptures that guarantee us salvation. The first one is Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And my lovely wife is going to read that for us. And uh, she's going to read it big and loud so we can hear it even across the waters. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Paul does not pull any punches. Paul says, you got to believe this story, that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for your sins, rose from the dead. The apostle Paul says to us, even tonight, 2000 years later, the apostle Paul says to us that we must believe in this son of God, Jesus himself. Amen. If we're going to go to heaven, 
if we're going to meet Jesus, if we're going to get in touch with God and be satisfied when we get in touch with him, be excited when we get in touch with him, we must be born again through Jesus Christ himself. There's no other way around it. There's no other way. John chapter 10 says that Jesus is the door. He's the gate. He's the way to God. He's the way to the cheap sheepfold. He is our good shepherd. And tonight we find out again, or we reiterate again, the fact that the only way to get to God is through Jesus. Yes. Therefore, we must believe what happened on Calvary in order to have eternal life. Salvation is an eternal gift, and that eternal gift is eternal life. Yes. And it can only be obtained through the great physician, Jesus Christ. Amen. You can only have eternal life mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. See, people are living every day, but they're just walking around. They don't have eternal mm -hmm. life. They don't have life with Jesus. They don't have life with God. They don't have life by way of the Holy Spirit, except through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be victorious in our Christian walk, we first must be Christians. Mm -hmm. The only way to be Christians is that we confess Christ as our Savior. The only way to be healed from this deadly disease known as sin mm -hmm. is through Jesus Christ. That's He's right. the great physician. He's the healer. All of us at one time were patients. And I dare tell you today, we're still patients. Mm -hmm. We still need Jesus. Mm -hmm. So tonight we focus more on reiterating the fact that you need Jesus for salvation as well as making sure that we walk with those who just receive Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the doctor. Jesus is the great physician. And only the doctor can write prescriptions. And the prescription that the doctor write will always point to the word of God. Amen. It will always point to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ points us to God's word. We must always make sure that we reaffirm our faith. Mm -hmm. Our faith must be reaffirmed because there are situations out here, there are conditions that can take place, and these things that take place or will take place in our lives are enough to discourage us. Right. It is enough to make us think that we're not saved. Right. It is enough to, for the devil to sneak in and convince you that your salvation is not real or your salvation mm -hmm. is not eternal. Mm -hmm. And so we must understand, first of all, as according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, mm -hmm. that we must believe the story. Right. The Apostle Paul says, Jesus died and rose again. Jesus came into the world to not condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses one through five, my lovely wife is going to read that one for us also. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses one through five. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. So he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. And then Paul says he was seen by over 500 men at one time. Mm -hmm. This is after the resurrection. And then he was seen by me, Paul says in verse number 9, 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 9, Paul says, then he was seen by me, one who was an apostle out of due season. Mm -hmm. So we must, we must always focus on the fact that Jesus Christ saves us eternally. Right. He saves us for now on, he saves us regardless of what we go what we go through, we are still saved. Once the patient is saved, 
once the unsaved becomes saved, he or she will always be saved. Mm -hmm. A lot of conversation has been going on for many mm -hmm. centuries as to whether or not if you're saved, whether or not if you're born again, will you continue to be born again? Right. Some brother said, boy, my wife and I went to Las Vegas and we stayed saved. Mm -hmm. He said that in a way that suggests to us that he could have lost his salvation. Mm -hmm. He suggests to us that what he could have done is lost his salvation because he was so surrounded by sin. Mm -hmm. But my question becomes, at what point do you lose your salvation? Mm -hmm. If we can identify when we gain our salvation, mm -hmm. we ought to be able to identify when we lose our salvation. Mm -hmm. So if we can identify that we are now saved, mm -hmm. we ought to be able to identify when we are unsaved. No one can tell us who believe that you're not always saved. No one can tell us when they become unsaved. Right. Oh, they list things like murder. They list mm -hmm. things like adultery. They list things like rape. You're not saved because of your deeds. Mm -hmm. You didn't get saved because of your deeds. That's right. That's right. You got saved because of Jesus' deeds on Calvary. Mm -hmm. And on the day of resurrection, mm -hmm. Paul says in first Corinthians 15, he says in Romans chapter 10, he says in John chapter three, that we are saved by Jesus, the Christ. That's right. We are saved by Jesus, the Christ. So if we're saved by Jesus Christ and we're not saved by our deeds, then we can't do any deeds that would make us unsaved. Amen. The Amen. question become, was that person saved or not? Mm -hmm. If that person is saved by way of Jesus Christ, he is saved from now on. That's right. That's right. He cannot be plucked out of the hand mm -hmm. of God. He cannot be plucked out of the hand of Jesus. He cannot be plucked out of the ark of safety. That's right. He is saved from now on. I know it's hard for us to believe because we're smart. We're intelligent. Mm -hmm. And we know in our intelligence that it takes hard work in order to make something happen. We know that it takes hard work in order to make things go forward. Mm -hmm. We know that it takes hard work in order to be successful in life. But God has already laid out a plan. Yeah, His right. plan is simple. His plan is through Jesus Christ and that we are saved Amen. from now on. The new patient starts off on milk. Mm -hmm. And he or she graduates to the meat of the word. We must understand in order for the new person, the new convert, the new patient to realize his or her victory through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. they must get involved in a regimented Bible study program. Mm -hmm. The reason why people have so many questions about their salvation is because either they're not being taught mm -hmm. properly or they are not attending the teaching arms of the church. Right, right. Bible study, group ministry, where Bible study is going mm -hmm. forward, the teaching arms of the church, whether it be Sunday school right. or a Baptist training union. It is those things that we can't do on Sunday morning right. that we can get taught on Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, That's right. at night and in the daytime or in the evening time. Because there is a call and response when you're preaching. Mm -hmm. When one is preaching, there's a call and response and somebody's responding, amen, go ahead, preacher, say that, you're on top of it now, mm -hmm. go ahead, doc. Whatever you choose to say to encourage the preacher to tell me more, mm -hmm. I oftentimes say, tell me, tell me more, tell me more, because there ought to be a response mm -hmm. during the preaching moment. But there is a valuable point 
doing the teaching of the Bible that you just can't get during the teaching moment. There ought to be question and answers. There ought to be interaction. There ought to be demonstrations. There ought to be some kind of illustration during the teaching moment. You just can't get it on Sunday morning alone. Mm -hmm. So it is our responsibility to, re to refer every person who is saved to a great Bible teaching church. Mm -hmm. And tell them to join. Influence them to join that church. Mm -hmm. And then stress the importance of attending the church on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of a great falling away mm -hmm. from the church. Not only are we in the middle of a great falling away from the church, we are also in the middle of a great falling away from God. Mm -hmm. And because men are in the middle, and we even as Christians or Christians or the born again believer are in the middle of a great falling away, people are so confused. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is get back to the basics. That's right. Paul then said in Romans chapter 10, he did not say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and he didn't, and John did not say in John 3, 16 through 17, he did not say that you must speak in tongues. Right, right. He did not say that you must shout. Mm -hmm. He did not say that you must continue to celebrate. Mm -hmm. But what he did say, you must believe. Right. And you believe in the story of Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection. And as soul winners, it is our responsibility mm -hmm. to tell people of the death, burial, and resurrection mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I've said to you many, many times before that it's important for people to know that you are saved. Mm -hmm. It is important for people to know how you were saved. It is also important for people to know that you've been healed. Mm -hmm. But the greatest miracle that one will ever experience is the saving of a lost soul. Mm -hmm. Your physical healing, your mental healing, mm -hmm. all that's good. But the greatest miracle that one will ever experience is the saving of a lost soul. Amen. Amen. Nobody can do it but Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can't get there through Buddha. You cannot be saved through Muhammad. And yeah, they will tell you that he's just another prophet. Mm -hmm. He's more than a prophet. He did prophesy and everything he prophesied came true. Right. But he also is the, the righteous son of God mm -hmm. that gave his life right. as a ransom for you and me. Mm -hmm. Jesus died for you. He died for me on a skull hill called Calvary, and he rose from the dead after they buried him in a borrowed tomb. The soul winner is a winner of souls. Mm -hmm. And as winners of soul, we are required some things. Much is required of us. Once the patient's conditions improves, he or she will be tempted to forego ongoing treatment. Oh, you know how we are. Once we get to a point where we can walk, we, we can run. Once we get to the point where we have, have really gotten this thing down, then we don't need God anymore. We don't need the medicine. We don't need the medicine. <laughs> we don't, as a matter of fact, we don't need the great physician. But we need the medicine. We need the study of God's word. The ongoing treatment plan is very important to Christian health. It is very important that we study the Bible. Mm -hmm. It is very important that we attend church services. I know people have gotten to the point where they blame God, the devil, and COVID on everything. Mm -hmm. They're blaming God now that they don't need to be at church. They're blaming the devil because they miss church. And they're blaming COVID because they don't have to go to church. Mm -hmm. But you have to do something with Hebrews mm -hmm. chapter 10 verses 24 and 25, mm -hmm. where it says, don't you be like other folk who miss church, mm -hmm. but you need to value the assembly of one together, yes, hanging out with God, mm -hmm. hanging out with your brothers and sisters. 
And that person, every person needs a church home. Foxes have holes, that's their home. Birds have nests, that's their home. Every person needs a church home. Amen. Amen. Every person needs a church home. And because we are humans, we need God and what God has to offer. Mm -hmm. You should not wonder where you should be when the church is gathering. Whether it's in the weekend, whether it's on Sunday, whether it's during the week, there should not be a question of yes. where you should be when the church, the family is gathering. Right. We should look forward to the gathering of the family. Mm -hmm. We should look forward to the getting together, getting together with the family. Sunday school, Bible study, church worship service. We ought to look forward to Sunday classes or Wednesday classes or Amen. Tuesday classes. Amen. Whatever your day of worship, you ought to run to get to worship. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, there ought to be some nights when you know it's church service in the morning. You ought to wake up several times. Oh, is it time yet? <laughs> Is it time yet? Is it? Are y'all ready yet? You know, you can't drag in as if you just go into a club and, and they waiting on you to get there to get, get the party started. Church ought to be on the forefront of your mind. It is such a terrible thing when I hear of a person saying, I don't even want to go to church on Sunday. And they use the excuse there are too many hypocrites are there. Mm -hmm. Well, I was at Kroger's the other day. Mm -hmm. I saw some hypocrites there. I was at the hamburger place. There were some hypocrites there. I was even at Randall's, and there were some hypocrites there. Mm -hmm. I was at the gym. There were some hypocrites there. Right. And people still go to the... I was at the family reunion, and there were some hypocrites. Mm -hmm. I was at the baby shower. There were some hypocrites there. I was at the wedding and there were some hypocrites there. I was at the funeral and there were some hypocrites there. People go everywhere they want to and therefore you ought to be in church. Amen. So no one should have to pump you or prime you. You need to have a hunger, a thirst, and a strong desire for worshiping with the saints. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. According to Proverbs 27, 17, Iron sharpens iron, and just like iron sharpens iron, so does one brother or sister sharpen the other. Mm -hmm. Get in church. Mm -hmm. Don't use the excuse. And don't be late. <laughs> show up on time. Show up before. Because if you show up and you're in the parking lot, when it's time for the church to start, you're late. That's right. If you're walking in the door and church is starting, you're late. If you're walking down the aisle and church is starting, you're late. The only way you're on time is there if you're there before time. Yes, right. The soul winner should continue to monitor the patient's progress. If I lead you to Christ, I need to make sure that you're strong enough to make it. You don't have a baby and lay the baby on the couch and say, feed yourself. <laughs> you don't just have a baby and put the baby on the floor and say, get up and go to bed. You have to coach that baby. You have to help that baby. Matter of fact, you have to help the baby by picking the baby up. Mm -hmm. So it's our responsibility to monitor prog the progress. Every patient has a different need. Mm -hmm. Every patient have different needs. Mm -hmm. No one person have the needs of the other person. Mm -hmm. And folk these days will drop you off in a minute. They say, you too needy. <laughs> But it is our responsibility to disciple people. Jesus says, Jesus says, upon this rock I build my church and the very gates of hell should not prevail against it. But he also says, go and make disciples. That's right. Amen. As we evangelize, as we meet and greet people, as we lead them to Christ, right. we got to make sure we stay with them, walk with them, and lead them. And our lifestyle ought to be of such that they can walk behind us mm -hmm. or walk that with is. us and that we can help pave the road for them. You need to make sure that we trust the great physician to terminate the soul winner's care. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. Sister Davis just led me to Christ. You saw that just now, right? It is her responsibility 
to make sure she stays with me, walks with me, until the Holy Spirit says, it's all right now. He can make it on his own. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, he is right every time. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, he, the third person of the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he's no less than God because he's third. Right. You know how some people say, last but not least, what they're really saying, I'm getting ready to give you the least now. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is no less. He just comes third place in the position that he has mm -hmm. at the time that he shows up, at the time that he's revealed to us. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason he's the third person. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the thing about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they don't fight over who's going to be first. Mm -hmm. They don't argue about who's going to be first. The plan is already laid yes. out. Yes, when children are growing up, many times they fight over who's going to sit in the front seat. Mm -hmm. I want to sit in the front seat. And they race to the front seat. And usually the older or the biggest or the strongest used to get the front seat because he or she can make it there faster than the others every time. The Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, do not operate that way. God is on the scene. Jesus is on the scene. And as Jesus moves over in the flesh, when this physical Jesus that provided spiritual nourishment for the disciples. When he got to ready to move off the scene, he said, let me tell you now, the Holy Spirit is coming. Mm -hmm. The comforter, the parakeet, the parakeet, the, par the parakeet, paraclete, is he's going to show you everything and he is going to duplicate what I've said to you. Mm -hmm. It's not an argument. The Holy Spirit knows his place. So the Holy Spirit shows us and tells us when to terminate our care. It's like children. Some of us think we, we stop caring for them after they turn 18. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, until ash to ashes, dust to dust, mm -hmm. and earth to earth, we still care for our children. Mm -hmm. We have to ask God and the Holy Spirit, along with Jesus Christ, uh, will, we, will we be allowed to leave the patient alone. And when the patient is strong enough mm -hmm. to make it on their own. When the patient has grown spiritually. And check this out. Once you lead somebody to Christ, they trust you. Mm -hmm. And they come back to you even when they're weak. They come, even though they're still, they are still saved, they come back to you. So you, we need to make sure that we are there for them. Mm -hmm. A soul winner should follow up with a new convert immediately and regularly. Mm -hmm. One thing I try to do at our church as we get new visitors, especially first-time visitors, mm -hmm. I try to make a phone call to each one of them. I miss some. I've missed about five, six, maybe seven over the last 18 years. Mm -hmm. But when they visit the first time, I personally, as the pastor, want them to know that we enjoy them being there. We, I want them to know that they're free to come often. I want to know what can I pray for them concerning because they need to know that they mean something to our church and to our church Amen. pastor. And so we need to follow up with them immediately and regularly. Our responsibility as soul winners do not end once the patient accepts Jesus Christ. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. As a good physician's assistant, we're the assistant to the, to the physician. We are not the doctors. We will never be the doctor. Mm -hmm. We just are soul winners that prepares the atmosphere, prepares the patient for the incoming of the doctor. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere. When you, go, when you go to the doctor, there's a person that moves you from room to room to make you think you're going somewhere, mm -hmm. make you think you get into the doctor. You start off in this big room. Then they put you in a smaller room. Then they put you in a room by yourself. And all of that may take 45 minutes. And your appointment was 20 minutes ago. Right. Then 
they pull the paper down and they want you to see them pull the paper down. So you will know that you're not laying on a piece of paper that the previous patient laid on. They pull the patient, the paper down, they tear it off, they put it in the trash can, take their gloves off and throw them in the trash can. And then in comes the white coat. Here comes the doctor. We are soul winners. It is our responsibility to prepare the heart of the patient for the incoming doctor. His name is Jesus. We are soul winners and we are there to win souls. Prepare the atmosphere. Prepare the, the place that the the patient is going to hear the word and prepare the patient's mind and heart for the doctor. Only thing we do is we sow seeds. Wow. We present the word. Mm -hmm. God draws man by way yes. of the Holy Spirit. As a good physician's assistant, we are to maintain a personal log of those who trust Jesus Christ mm -hmm. unto salvation. You ought to be writing down the names or the con the situations or mm -hmm. the circumstances. Uh, I remember some of my some of my leadership, uh, the restroom witness, and then I had the police witness. I have the bilingual witness. You ought to write them down and go back and refer to them and thank the Lord, the homeless man witness. All these are moments that I was able to lead people to Christ. The Holy Spirit caught them. And arrested their mind. And he used me to do it. Write down, make a log of those you talk to about Christ. Even though you don't lead them to Christ every time. Make a log of who you come in contact with. And use that contact list yes. to encourage them, to pray for them. And pray over those things that God brings before you. Use it to remind you of the kingdom building you perform in the name of Jesus and then rejoice. Amen. We have to remind ourselves, if it's not what we want, God, I remember how you used me. God, thank you for using yes. little old me. Amen. God, thank you for blessing me. Yes. And as we have our law, we got to be creative with our law. One final uh, passage of scripture, one final pericope, and I, I'll leave you alone for tonight. That is John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. I've talked a lot, of, lot tonight about eternal life, eternal salvation, being saved from now on, being a Christian from day one to the end of this, this life as we know it, for eternity with no end. Let's see what John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30 says to us. John chapter 10 verses 22 through 30. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter and Jesus walked in the temple in so on Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. And I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hands. I and my father are one. Look at Jesus. Jesus always have opposition. As Christians, we will always have opposition. Mm -hmm. We will always have somebody staring at us, watching us, trying to see are we really Christians. And if you slip up in their presence, they're going to remind you. <laughs> I thought you were a Christian. Yeah, I am. I'm a human Christian. And because I'm human, I'm going to make mistakes. And when Jesus was faced with this same situation, this is how he answered. He says, you don't know me because you don't know my father. And then he says, those who do know me, they recognize who I am. Not only do they recognize who I am, they obey me. They follow me. When we're saved, we ought to follow Christ. 
when we're saved, we shouldn't be playing games. That's right. When we're saved, we ought to follow Jesus Christ because he is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is the one that watches over us. And so John says, Jesus is speaking. John says that once you are saved, you're in Jesus' hand. Mm -hmm. And no man, not even the devil in hell, can pluck us out of the hand of Jesus. Right. It behooves us. It, it instructs us. It begs us. It, it unctions us. It beseeches us to be born again. Yes, right. mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if you're going to be a soul winner, you can't win souls unless you've already been saved. Right. Unless you already had your soul saved. Mm -hmm. Unless you already have had your soul won. So we must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And once we believe that he's the Son of God that died for our sins, rose from the dead, once we believe that, invite him into our life, we are saved from now on. Jesus yes. says, no man could snatch you from his hand. Mm -hmm. No man can. He is more powerful than any other force. The Bible teaches that that the greatest one is in us than in the whole the world. Mm -hmm. The whole world does not compare to the greatness that's in us. The Holy Spirit, God the Father, mm -hmm. God the Son. Jesus says, I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. And when he says, I and our Father is one, are one, he's saying to all of us, if you got Jesus, mm -hmm. you got God. Amen. If you got God, that's you got right. the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he is more powerful than any locomotive. His name is Jesus. And we have to celebrate him. He's the one who died for us. That's, right. That's why I say at our church, I don't have any members. Because if I had members, more of them would be back at church. They are God's people. And it's God's responsibility. It is our responsibility to present Christ. God does the drawing. Mm -hmm. We do the planning. We do the sowing of the seed. We do the speaking. We do the life living, Christian life living. We do it all. Right. And we do it for the sake of winning souls for Christ. Mm -hmm. Somebody may be listening to me today that never received Christ as your personal Savior. This is your moment. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus, to get to know the righteous son of God. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity to know Jesus like never before. I'm not talking about what you heard. This is an opportunity to have eternal life yes. through Jesus Christ. This is your opportunity to go to heaven when you die. This is your opportunity to, to ride with Jesus when he raptures up the church. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to leave here one day. We're either going to leave in the rapture or we're going to leave in death. We're going to have to get out of here. This is your moment. Right. It doesn't matter if things are going right or things are going, things are going wrong. If you're not saved, you're going to hell. Right. Hell was made for somebody. But you don't have to go to hell. Right. You can be saved right here, right now, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Would you bow your head with me today and invite Jesus Christ into your life? by just confessing this little simple story yes. of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Now come into my in Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. We believe that you're now saved and that you, you are eternally saved. You're saved forever. Amen. We believe you have eternal life through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Will you give me one of those books? One of those. The book that we've just covered is called Sharing the Gospel, Good News on the Go. Sharing the Gospel, Good News on the Go. Uh, it is it is a book written. I'm the lead author in this book, and we have over 20 
different contributing authors that present the gospel of Jesus Christ and evangelism from 20 different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Sharing the gospel, good news on the go. Please contact me for your, what, what's the word I use? Your discounted, <laughs> uh, your, your discounted cost for this book. It is on Amazon, it's on Barnes and Nobles, it is on iTunes. But if you contact me, inbox me, give me a call. I'll make sure you get a copy of this book for a very low discount price. Amen. So we've just covered uh, the highlights from this book over the last two months. We've covered uh, this book called Sharing the Gospel, mm -hmm. Good News on the Go. It gives you practical evangelism experiences from 20 different contributing authors. So please contact me and let me know that you need your copy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you want to give tonight to this ministry, New Beginning Church. If you want to give to New Beginning Church, you can do it two ways. First of all, you can go by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. That is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, mm -hmm. he draws all men unto himself. So our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at at yahoo.com. Our P.O. box that you would mail in your, your offering to is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, mm -hmm. 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. You can mail in your offering or you can zell in your offering. We'll be glad to hear from you financially. We'll be glad to hear from you spiritually. And if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior tonight, let us know that you have. If you committed to a church, even if it's not our church, we're about kingdom building, yes. let us know that you have. Mm -hmm. And if you have repented of your sins tonight, let us know you have. Inbox us and let us know. Let's pray and ask God blessings upon this mm -hmm. offering and let's pray out. Father God, we thank you now for these gifts. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for money. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you, Father God, for another chance to give unto you. Bless every giver and bless every gift. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Mm -hmm. Please come back to join us in Bible study on Wednesday night at 715. Join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Bible for Sunday school mm -hmm. and also at our 1030 service on Sunday morning also. Thank you again for following us. Thank you for being a part of it. Are there any things that are missing? Music at 8 o'clock. Music at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. Bring your youth and young people out Sunday. for music at 8 a.m. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We bless you and we thank God for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.